Welcome to another episode of The Path TV. I'm Philip Baker. This is my wife, Laura Baker. We've got the happy husband. We've got the missus. And it's uh, really good to be able to spend some time with you today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, welcome to The Path. Baby, tell them why we call it The Path. Well, we call it The Path because marriage is a journey. It is not a destination. It is not a destination. Once you get married, you don't stop. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to keep growing. You got to keep moving farther and farther and farther along, along the path. And that's what this is all about. Uh, no one's arrived. None of us. We, we sure haven't. Right. And so we're, you know, we're preaching to us as much as we're preaching to you. And so we want to, you know, we want to, in the day and the hour that we live in, you know, we want to be the, the, the wife God's called us to be, the husband God's called us to be, to be in the church God's called us right. to be in, to have the children that, you know, that God's called us to, to have. And to have that and to do that, you've got to continually grow. You just can't stay there with your feet in cement. You've got to continually grow. That's what the path's all about. It is. And our hope is week after week, Sunday evening after Sunday evening that we all, all of us, will get a little bit further along the path. And maybe if there's somebody out there watching and for whatever reason your marriage has gotten off the path, uh, maybe we can get you back on. And so uh, and that's me, what it's all say, about. You know, also, baby, this is not just for married couples. Listen, if you've got some single friends out there and they're believing God for their spouse, right. they're standing for their spouse... I tell them to join us because I wish I'd have known this stuff. I wish I would have known it 33 years ago. We'd have been farther along the path. Single people, this is for you too. Absolutely. Amen. All right, it's uh, story time with Uncle Philip. All right. <laughs> you know, since 2003, we have been, uh, we've been traveling America, traveling the world, preaching in over 50 churches a year. Uh, a lot of pastors, a lot of leaders, a lot of believers that we've just had the honor of getting to spend a lot of time with. And one of the most common situations, one of the most common stories, it has been happening for as long as I can remember. I go into a church and I meet the pastor and I meet his wife. Um, I, meet a, I, meet, I, meet a, I meet a leader and, and, and their wife. You know, I, I meet a believer and their wife. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and I'm going... I'm saying, I'm saying, oh my goodness, how did he get her? <laughs> and uh, sometimes I'll ask pastor, I go, pastor, how did you get her? I mean, my gosh, look in the mirror and then go look at her. How did you pull this off? You know, in football, there's this expression that's called out kicking your coverage. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, there's a lot of men that have out kicked their coverage. Um, I've often said it this way. I'll, I'll, I'll tell a pastor, I'll say, Pastor, come on now, you married up. Yeah. Uh, you set the world record for marrying up. And I know you've seen that so many times in your life. Come on now. How many times have you seen a, have you seen a man and on a scale of one to ten, come on, they're a four. Come on, they're a five. <laughs> and then you look at their wife and, man, she's like a seven or an eight or a nine. And you're sitting there going, okay, how... Did he get her? I mean, look at this right here. I mean, come on. Uh, how did I get her? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I married up. And if you'd be honest, come on, go uh, look at your wife, and, and, you, and you're asking the same question. How did you get her? All right? Well, here's the thing. Women are amazing. Wives are amazing. I mean, what God did is an amazing thing. Women have the ability to overlook a lot of physical things. You know, whether a man's got hair or not. You know, whether he's got a belly. Whether he's got, you know, he, he, they, can, they can overlook a lot of this stuff. And if a man loves God, if a man's got a great personality... Sense of humor. Sense of humor. It's funny. You know, he's trustworthy. He's faithful. Come on, he's a good provider. He's a hard worker. Hard worker. He's got a vision for his life. Uh -huh. You know, a woman can over, overlook a lot of this physical stuff. The aesthetics. The aesthetics of it. And really fall in love with a man and be a great wife 
And it's just one more reason why women are so much more amazing than men. Amen? And so here's today's dynamic that we want to talk about. Because I know it's funny, but at the same time, I believe it's very critical to having a great marriage. And here's the dynamic for today. Got it right here. Men, talking to you men. All right, listen up. Men, you're walking through the living room right now. Listen, men. If you want a great marriage, you must, must, must know that you married up. You want a great marriage? Men, you got to know that you married up. What do you think about that, babe? I agree, and it's not a bad thing. You just listen, wait until he explains it to you. It's a good thing. It's, it's the way that God intended it. Absolutely. It's not a, it's not a dig at men. You know, our world, our society we live in, they like to take digs at men, digs at husbands, digs at fathers. This isn't a dig. Just listen and you'll understand. All right, I think I got your attention. You know, Proverbs 18.22 says this, He that finds a wife finds a good thing. All right, my wife, Miss Laura, we've been married 33 years. Yep. She's a good thing. She's a good thing. So here's the thing about men. When men are looking for a good thing, when they're looking for a wife, man, they're, they're always looking up. <laughs> they're always looking. That's if how a, men are built. That's, if, how, that's yeah. way we, if a man is a two, they, they want a five. If a man is a three, they want a six. If a man is a four, they want a seven. If a man is a one, they want a ten. That's right. Men that's, that's are more. always <laughs> looking up. We, we want a good thing. Men, husbands, you married a good thing. Amen? And so let me give you three thoughts about this that will kind of break it down and make it, once again, what the path is all about. Applicable, rememberable, yeah. come on, practical, mm -hmm. simple. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. If you're looking for super spiritual, uh, you're not going to enjoy the path. We're going to be real, raw, authentic, and sincere. All yes. right? Three quick things about... Uh, men you married up. Number one is this. Your wife, that wonderful woman that you're married to, she is an object lesson of God's grace in your life. She's one of the most ultimate object lessons of God's grace in your life. Do you understand what, what grace means? You know, mercy is not getting what you deserve. All right? Have you ever uh, been stopped by a policeman? You were speeding and uh, the policeman pulled you over, and he gave you a warning. All right, that was mercy. Uh, you deserved a ticket, but he didn't give you one. That's mercy. But grace is the opposite. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Yes. And I'm telling you, I didn't deserve this woman. And you didn't deserve your wife. And she is an object lesson of God's grace in your life. And when you know that, and you embrace that, and you see that she's a gift, and she's a good thing, and she's God's grace, oh, there's, there's going to be a, this greater desire, this, this motivation, this initiative to treat her as such. Amen? Amen. And so that's the first point. Oh, we've got some more. We've got some more. But this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. There is something that is so special we want you to be a part of. And it's absolutely free, and it's easy, and it's life-changing. And every morning, it'll bless your life. It's called the Daily Move. It hits your inbox every morning. doesn't take long to read. It takes about 10 seconds to read. But it'll change your life. It'll motivate you. It'll move you. And we want you to know all about it and give you an opportunity uh, to sign up. And so, hey, we'll be back in 35 seconds. And watch this. You're going to want to get a hold of the Daily Move.
All right, welcome back to uh, The Path TV. And all you got to do to sign up for The Daily Move is just go to our website. Uh, it's being put at the bottom of this program um, on different occasions. Go to our website, philipbaker.org. It's right there when you pull up the website. It says sign up for The Daily Move. It's just your name and your email, and that's it. And tomorrow morning, it will in. arrive in your inbox. Also, tell us what country you're from. Yeah. That'll be real cool. And then while you're at our website, you know, maybe we're coming to a church near you. Check out our itinerary. We are all over America. We're all over the world. I mean, we would love to meet you in one of God's local churches. Amen? All right, we're talking about how awesome your wife is and how you married up and how she is an object lesson of God's grace in your life. Amen? And so here's the second thing that we want you to... Uh, that we want a second thought we want to throw at you. I like this segment. I like this segment. We're talking about how great women are. That's great. You know, inside, and the, the dynamic is inside most women, there is a desire to have a marriage. There is a desire to have a home. There is a desire to have and raise children. And I'm saying in most because I, I don't want to just be a blanket statement. But there's something inside of us, and it's it's... It's a God-given thing that he placed in us before we were born. I mean, it's the reason that little girls, you know, I was little. I'd put the pillowcase on my head because I was the bride. And I would, you know, I would dress up and I would think of things. Listen, there's something inside of a woman that wants to build a life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's our asset to our husbands. It's, it's what we bring to the table. Right. It's one of the greatest things we bring to a table. A man could, they, they're, they're such loners in most situations, they could live life by themselves. They could live at a house, you know, and never put curtains up. Women, we get, we get married and we, we go into that little bitty, that first apartment we had, we right. go into that. We start decorating it in our head. Whether we have the money to do it all right then, we start decorating it. We put pictures on the wall. and Husbands, they're like, mm. I mean, now, Philip likes to decorate. He likes to help with the house. Sometimes. Sometimes I let him. <laughs> no. But there's something inside of a woman that wants to, that has that desire. And it's not just for a home, but it's to build a relationship. Right. Women are very relational. That's why we get up and all go to the bathroom at the same time. We want to experience everything together. We yeah, want to things you'll never hear a man say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, you want to go to the bathroom with me? Come on, Joe. Let's go to the bathroom. Uh, it, it ne never been said in the history of the world. That's why they have girls' trips, women's trips. I just went on one. That's why we do that, because we get together so we can talk for hours on the way down there, hours while we're there, hours on the way back, and as I'm coming back from her house, I call her and still talk, and it's still not enough time. Why is that? Because women are relational. Right. They want to build a home. They want to build a marriage. It's almost like God dropped a manual inside of us. We're not perfect by any means, any stretch of the imagination, but it's like he dropped it inside of us to want that, to, to desire that, to seek after that. Right. Amen. Amen. So remember, your wife's an object lesson of God's grace. Number two, on the inside of her, man, there's this manual. There's this manual, and you need her. You need that manual that God put on the inside of her. She's a good thing, man, you married up. And then here's the third thought. And this is something that, man, I, it, it really it hits me in my core because of some life experiences I've had. You know, I've had the, I've had the honor of traveling the world, preaching the gospel, you know, and I've been in a lot of countries where, uh, you know, real third world countries, uh, very unspiritual, very carnal, very, um, you know, uh, the, the way things are or the way things have been for, you know, hundreds, thousands of years. And what I have found is the, the, the further away a society, a culture, a country is from the things of God, the more you see how women are mistreated, okay? In so many countries around the world, women are on the, they're on the same level as yes. uh, you, got, you got land, you got your cattle, and you got your wife. I mean, in a lot of countries, yes. women are property. 
their property. And the man, he's everything. Yeah. The man, he is king. The man, he is the ruler. He is the master. And the man is on the pedestal. And everybody worship me. And everything revolves around me. And I've got this much land. And I've got my cattle. And i got my wife. And everybody bows to me. Or wives. Or wives, plural. And men, anytime the man is on that pedestal. And he thinks he married down. Oh, do you, you see how I switched it there? Come on, the man thinks he married down. Mm-hmm. The, the woman thinks she married up. And the man is up on that pedestal. Man, a man can't handle that pedestal. A man wasn't meant to be on that pedestal. Nope. When a man is on that pedestal, and it happens all over the world, and it had been happening for thousands of years, he will doormat his wife. He will treat her like a doormat. He will not treat her as a good thing. He will not treat her as a gift from God. He will not treat her as an object lesson of God's grace in his life. Men, we weren't supposed to be on that pedestal. Our wives are supposed to be on that pedestal. And when you find a man, you get a husband, and he puts his wife up on that pedestal, and he takes care of her, and he loves her, and he cherishes her. Come on now. And he just, he just adores her. There's something in that woman. There's something in that wife that will take care of him for the rest of his life. That wife will, will, will make heaven on earth for that husband and that family and that vision and that calling, and that anointing, and that ministry. Because remember, she's got the manual. Come on, God put in her the manual. And when that man puts his wife up on that pedestal, oh my goodness. Now, let, me, let me say this, because we're going to hit this at a later time, but I want to make sure that men understand we're not talking about you not being honored. We'll get to that, because that is, that is very, very important. It's right. a, one of the greatest needs of men. We're not talking about that. He's just talking about putting a woman on the pedestal because when you put a woman on the pedestal, she will know how to take care of you. Mm-hmm. And she will take care of you. Right. It's not you worshiping in her. It's not that at all. But it's, it's, you lo- it's a form of love. It's you loving her. But it's not taking anything away from men. Absolutely. Right? That's good. That's good. And you know, a lot of men may say, well, you know, if, if my wife will do this and my wife will do that, you know, then... Oh, we can't operate that way. Can't operate that way. Come on, whatever you sow, you reap. We've got to sow love, sow honor, sow, come on, adoring our wife. Come on, men, if we'll do the right thing. Uh, Men, if we'll love our wives. Men, if we'll just cherish Cherish. our wives and appreciate our wives. If, if, If we will do what God is wanting us to do and we treat our wives right and we put them up on that pedestal, and we treat them as the object lesson of God's grace they are. And he that finds a wife finds a good thing. I'm telling you, that manual, that honor that's on the inside of your wife, it will kick in, and she will take care of you for the rest of your life. It will also bring peace to your home. Absolutely. Because it shows your children how to treat your, their, their mother. It's not just about what you do, but it's what you're emulating for your children. And so your children will treat their mother with respect, will treat their mother with honor, and will love their mother and cherish their mother. And it won't even just be your family. It'll go, people will see that. People will see, you know, other people that need to see that in marriages, that's what they'll see. And mm-hmm. they'll go, I want, I want a marriage like that. Right, you know, right. Single people, it'll say, I, I want a husband like that. Amen. 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 So men, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know where you are today, what part of the world you're in, what kind of culture you came up in. You know, there's so many different cultures out there. I don't know what kind of daddy you had and how he treated his wife, your mama. I, 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 all of our experiences are different. I don't know what you inherited from your dad as far as what kind of daddy he was, what kind of husband he was, what kind of father he was. And the thing is, 
you know, you can't do anything about that. He was what he was. Your granddaddy was yeah. what he was. And if it was good, and he gave you a good example, and the things that we're talking about today, you saw that in your dad. You need, you need, to, be, you need to be so thankful. Yes. You need to call your dad if he's still alive, and you need to say, Daddy, thank you so much for being yes. a good example. Yes. Thank you so much for showing me how to love my wife the way you loved mama, all right? But if you didn't have that, if you didn't have that, and your dad treated your mama like a doormat and treated her less than and didn't do your mom right, well, listen, you're not bound by that. You know, your past, come on, doesn't have to define your future. You know, you can make some decisions. Yeah. You, can, you can change it. You can start something new. You can, you, you can, come on, you can reverse it. Yeah, because now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Yeah. And if your dad wasn't a great role model for you as far as being a husband or a father, well, guess what? You can make some changes. You can make some decisions. You can turn this thing around. Yeah. And you're not just doing it for you, but you're doing it for your kids. Yes. You're doing it for your grandchildren. Yes. You're, you're, you're doing things right. You're getting your marriage on the path, not just for you, because it's not just all about you. It's about your kids. It's about your grandchildren. Yes. It's about uh, loving your wife in a way that your son will learn how to love his wife. Men, I want to challenge you today. It's also so your daughters will know what to oh, look for. Oh, come on, that's good. It's what your daughter, th then your daughters won't let some Neanderthal that treats her like a less than person, treats her like dirt. She'll look at that and go, ah, uh, that ain't how daddy treated mama, and I don't want that. Right. So it's, you know, it's for And both. I've got two daughters. I've got one that's uh, uh, 20, and I've got another one that's 18. And both of them have said, it's slipped out, <laughs> you know, that they're going to have a high expectation for their husband because they've seen the way I treat her. Right. And they're not going to settle for anything less. That's right. So me and you're out there. What I want to challenge you today is I want you to be honest. I want you to be objective. I want you to, you know, step outside yourself a little bit. You know, very few people have the ability to do that. Step outside yourself a little bit and ask yourself who's on the pedestal. Ask yourself who's on the pedestal. Uh, objectively look yeah. at how you treat your wife and ask yourself, did I marry up? Am I treating my wife as she's an object lesson of God's grace in my life? Is she up on that pedestal? Am do I, I do I want my daughters to marry a man like me? Ooh, do I want my daughters to marry a man like me? And men, if for some reason you're honest and you say, you know what, I think I'm up on that pedestal, brother Philip, what do I do? It's simple. Get down. <laughs> Get down off that pedestal and change the culture of your home yes. and put your wife up there. And I'm telling you, something will kick in. Something will kick in in her, and you're fixing to experience your best days yet. Laura, take just a second and talk to these ladies out there. Well, you know, we're, we're doing this, and, you know, we're not under the assumption that some ladies aren't sitting there thinking to themselves, I, I'm the doormat. I'm the one Ooh. that has been walked over. Right. And so I just want to encourage you ladies, know your worth, know your value. You are valuable. You bring assets to the marriage. Mm -hmm. A marriage is never just about a man. It's never just about a woman. It's about the, the combination. It's about the unity. Heirs together of the grace of life. There you go. And so know your value, know your worth. Also know your insecurities and know that, that sometimes that when he, when he says something that pops into that insecurity, don't allow your emotions to take over. Don't allow your emotions, and women, we are emotional people. Don't allow your emotions to take over. And then recognize and listen to the right voice. You know, you've always got a voice that's speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's your voice inside your head. Sometimes it's the Holy Ghost. It's, the, it's God speaking to you. And sometimes it's the enemy. And when the enemy says, you're not worth it, you're not worth it, you're just, you, you, you should be a doormat. That's what you deserve. Right. You're listening to the wrong voice. So what do you do? You get in the Word. You get in your word and you find out who God called you to be. 
God didn't just call him to be something great. God mm. called you to be something great. God called you to be an asset. Absolutely. Find out who you are and expect, you know, start expecting and, and praying and asking God to reveal to him the gift that you are. Ask God, say, God, show him that I am a gift. I am an asset to him. Mm -hmm. I'm not just arm candy. I'm not just who takes care of the house. I'm not who Ooh. just cooks for him. Right. I'm not just who raises his kids. But I'm a partner. Yeah. I'm a part of this. I'm a gift from God to him. Amen? Amen. We got to get a hold of this. Got to get a hold of this. We got to get this right. Yeah. Listen, we're living in, there's a lot going on in our world right now. All over the world. There's a lot going on in America right now. We're living in dangerous times. We're living in perilous times. We're living in very prophetic times. And wives, husbands, Satan hates you. There's demonic power. There's a kingdom of hell and it hates you. And it hates your marriage. Because here's something Satan knows. Strong husbands, strong marriages. Strong marriages, strong families. Mm -hmm. Strong families, strong churches. Yes. Strong churches, strong kingdoms, strong kingdom. Men, Satan's after you, and he's after your marriage. And we've got to stand up in these dangerous, prophetic, perilous times. Yeah. And we've got to protect our marriage. And we've got to make sure it's functioning the way God meant it to function. Yes. And there's never been a greater hour to make sure things are right. And so husbands, wives, let's get things right. Take this today and let's move a little bit further along the path. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, before we go, remember, soon as you turn off, go to philipbaker.org. Sign up for the daily move. Yes. Your name, your email, put what country you're in. We would love to know what countries are watching this. And, uh, man, that would be so cool. And remember, it's free. It's free. And it'll start arriving in the morning. A different daily move for two years. You know what? You won't be able to say, I don't have time to read my word because that's a nugget every day. 10, 15 seconds. Amen. For more videos, go to our YouTube channel. Search PBM Philip Baker. And then, hey, pray about partnering with the ministry. You can do that at philipbaker.org also. Hey, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Path.